EPA has an important mission to protect human health and the environment, and this bill seeks to prevent EPA from fulfilling its responsibilities. It does not seem to matter that the proposed rule from EPA will save lives or that it is expected to result in up to an estimated $1.6 trillion, that's trillion with a T, uh, in benefits. EPA has an obligation under the Clean Air Act to protect public health by addressing air pollution, including from mobile sources. And we know that vehicles covered by this proposed rule will account for a large amount of greenhouse gas pollution, as well as other dangerous pollutants. But putting aside those health and environmental benefits, we should see this rule as an opportunity to further drive technological innovation. Over the last several years, or over the coming several years, the vehicle model years covered by EPA's proposed rule, we expect the cost of EVs to come down significantly, the performance and range of EVs to improve, and consumer demand for EVs to continue to grow. Let's stop looking backwards and stop trying to deny Americans the health and the economic benefits of EVs. And that includes significant job benefits. Because if we do this right, these vehicles will be built here with US-made components and US-made batteries. That is the vision imagined by the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and by the Inflation Reduction Act. And by all public reports, that is exactly what is beginning to happen with a litany of private sector commitments and investments to build new manufacturing facilities all across our country. Rather than prejudge the outcome of a not yet finalized EPA rulemaking process, we should be working together to help overcome any barriers, real or just perceived, that may slow down EV adoption. In the meantime, we should not block proposed public health protections that will provide more than a trillion dollars of benefits to the American people. Yes. With that, I urge my colleagues to oppose this bill, and Madam Chair, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. I'd like to recognize myself to strike the last word and speak in support of H.R. 4468, the CARS Act. At the Detroit Auto Show, President Biden said he believes the U.S. can own the future of the automobile market. Unfortunately, by using the EPA to institute government mandates and restrictions, he's handing the keys of America's auto future to China. We are offering a different approach with the CARS Act, one that encourages free enterprise and innovation. Hello, friends. There is a big update that you should know about. More and more payments could be on the way to many Americans. Over a billion dollars may begin to go out to eligible households as soon as this winter. This relief could be worth as much as $1,000. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for everything that you need to know. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin said this week that taxpayers in the state will be receiving some of their own money back in the form of tax cuts. During a General Assembly Budget Committee in Richmond, Youngkin said that Virginia has a massive surplus and that taxpayers should get money back. The Virginia governor added that he is agreeing to a one-time $1 billion tax rebate with plans to take up permanent tax relief in next year's state spending plan. The centerpiece of the deal is one-time payments of $200 for individual taxpayers and then $400 for couples that the Senate pushed as an alternative to proposed tax cut in the corporate and top individual tax rates. But some top Democrats believe that Virginia should use a surplus for a rainy day. If budget negotiators reach an agreement, the governor will call a special session of the General Assembly so the House of Delegates and Senate can vote on it. Budget leaders were hopeful of announcing an agreement this week. Governor Youngkin is expected to propose a next Virginia two-year spending plan in just four months. 
In addition, income tax rebates of $260 for individuals and up to $1,300 for families of five are already starting to show up in the bank accounts of more than 2.1 million Minnesota residents. The rebates, which are adding up to $1 billion, are part of legislation that was signed by Governor Tim Walz in May. It is to return a portion of the projected $17.6 billion budget surplus to some Minnesota taxpayers. According to state officials there, the first 200,000 or so payments landed in bank accounts last night into early Tuesday morning. The Minnesota State Revenue Department hopes to send another round of 600,000 payments on Thursday. Republicans in the state legislature have lambasted the small amount being given to Minnesota residents compared to the large size of the surplus. The state is still waiting on the Internal Revenue Service for a final ruling on whether the rebates will be subject to federal income taxes. The Biden administration formally launched a new income-driven repayment plan this week as student loan payments are set to resume later this summer. Top officials are touting the plan as the most affordable student loan repayment plan ever created. Under this program, many student loan bars will have low or even zero dollar payments. The Education Department launched a broad campaign to get borrowers to enroll in the savings on a valuable education, which is also known as SAVE. The SAVE plan will have a number of benefits, including lower monthly payments, as well as a subsidy that will eliminate interest capitalization and interest accrual that exceeds a borrower's monthly payment. The Education Department said in an official statement, borrowers will see their total payments per dollar borrowed fall by 40%. Borrowers with the lowest projected lifetime earnings will see payments per dollar borrowed fall by 83%. One of the key features of the new SAVE plan is an expanded poverty exemption. Student loan borrowers whose earnings fall within that exemption would have a calculated monthly payment of $0 every month. Even $0 payments can count towards student loan forgiveness under the income-driven repayment plan. According to an Education Department statement, which was released last month, the SAVE plan will cut monthly payments to $0 for millions of bars who make less than $32,800 a year or $67,500 for a bar with a family size of four. The department added that more than 1 million additional low-income student loan bars will qualify for the $0 payment. After several weeks of beta testing, the application for the new SAVE plan is now available and bars can start enrolling this week. The Biden administration is also launching an outreach campaign and will be coordinating with a number of nonprofit groups to encourage bars to enroll and save in the coming weeks. Well, to my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Wednesday. My dear friends, thank you so very, very much for being part of this community. Every Friday and this Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My friends, if you would like to enter these weekly giveaways, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.